So now that you've listened to that amazing song, what in the world does it mean? So today is Constitution Day. September 17th is Constitution Day, the day that the Constitution was signed. And so we are going to do a little lesson about what the Constitution is and what in the world does it mean? Because that's even more important. There's big words in there. This was written a long time ago. And so the words that are in it aren't really words that we use, do, ordain, and establish. What? So we're gonna make it more kid friendly. So first of all, behind me I have drawn um, the American flag. I know it's super fancy, but the colors obviously are red, white, and blue. I didn't color in each of the red stripes. That would have taken me a very long time. But there should be, the top one is red, and then it's a pattern every other. So how many red would it be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven red stripes on the flag, and there's six white stripes. So what's seven plus six? 13, there are 13 stripes total, red and white on the flag that represent the first 13 colonies in the United States. So that was like the first 13 kind of like, almost like states that were when, when the United States started as a country that were like, when they say established, that they were like, May, this is, this is gonna be one place to live. All right, and then if you look at the inside part, those are supposed to be stars. I did my best, I tried to trace them out. How many stars are on the flag, do you know? 50, there are 50 stars on the flag, and what do they represent? Each of the 50 what? States, the 50 states. That's something that you'll do in fourth grade is learn more about the states and all of the capitals of each state. Well, that's not a third grade thing, but there are 50 states in the United States, and each one is represented on our flag with a star. Okay, that has nothing to do with the Constitution, but we should know a little bit about our flag. Um, we say pledge allegiance to it every single day that we are making a promise to do our best for our country. Okay, so the, the song, I'm gonna be looking down at my computer um, while we do this so I can play snippets of the song. So the very first part of the preamble to the Constitution is saying, we the people in order to form a more perfect union. So this whole thing was made, the Constitution, because we wanna make sure that people have rights, that people are treated fairly, that there are certain things that all people should have if they're living in a certain place and working in a certain place. And so they came up with these ideas that um, everybody should um, be allowed to have or do. So the preamble is just the beginning part of the Constitution. The Constitution is longer than this, but this is all we're gonna focus on in today and for third grade. So we the, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union, what that means is we the people who are living here, us, in order to form a more perfect union, union is like um, a group. So in order to be, to be a more perfect group of people. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rewrite this a little bit so that it makes sense for Haley, for students, for us. So instead of we the people, if it's for students, we might say we the students. I'm gonna write, our um, kid-friendly preamble on this flag that I drew. So we the students, so say, instead of saying in order to form a more perfect union, it's really in order to form a more perfect group of like students. Um, so we're gonna say that in order to form a more perfect, and let's just say, let's just say Haley because that's the group that we're in. Even if you're virtual, you're still a group member of Haley's school. So in order to form a more perfect Haley, we the students in order to form a more perfect Haley. Now the next line is it, it in the real one is establish justice, justice. Justice means like fairness. So we're going to like put fairness in place because we want people to be treated fairly. I want to be treated fairly as an employee here. You want to be treated fairly, that you're getting a fair amount of work and graded fairly and get the same opportunities as everybody. So the next part, instead of saying establish justice, it really means like fairness. So we're going to say we treat people fairly. Treat people fairly. And then the next part, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. What is domestic tranquility? Um, really tranquility is kind of like peace. So domestic tranquility is kind of like we want there to be peace among all the people that are in our, 
our building. We want it to be a peaceful place to be, a peaceful place to go. So we can change that to like, keep this a place of peace. You don't want it to be a, a war zone when you come to school or when you come to virtual learning that everybody's angry and, and jumping down your throat and, and you know making you feel about bad. We want it to be a place of peace. Treat people fairly and keep this, keep Haley, a place of peace. So far, does this sound like a good Haley, a good school to go to? We the students, in order to form a more perfect Haley school, treat people fairly and keep this a place of peace. So far that sounds pretty good, but there's more, we're gonna add more. So the next line in the actual um, preamble of the Constitution is provide for the common defense. Now defense is like if you're defending yourself. Um, so like in, in the Constitution, it means more like providing a military in case there's that need to defend our country. Now that doesn't really work for Haley, um, but who do we have at the school that can kind of defend you, that can kind of stick up for you, for your rights and, and your needs? Uh, the teachers, the administrators. So um, it's kind of like, I guess the best way I can put it in, in, in kid-friendly language is you're gonna listen to the people that are in charge that kind of take care of you, that kind of like protect you. So we're gonna say, listen, to the people in charge. Listen to the people in charge, which is a little different than what the Constitution says, but we don't really have the need for an army at Haley. I'm the best army you're gonna get. Sorry, but I'm pretty good. I'll fight for your rights, absolutely. Okay, um, and then, let's see, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and, and the general welfare is like everybody's well-being you know we talk a lot about mindfulness so that's a lot about how you're thinking and feeling so um we could say i know like i've talked to, i've read a book before called have you filled a bucket today which is have you like said some nice things and done some nice things to make other people feel good so for people's general welfare we're making sure that generally they feel good and that we're making them feel good so for that one we could say fill each other's buckets and if you haven't read that book, that might be a read aloud that we need to do because it's it's really good. Fill each other's buckets. Fill each other's buckets. And then the next part. Um, secure the blessings of liberty. So secure the blessings of liberty. So again, like this is kind of stuff. Who says it? Hey, boys and girls, today I want you to secure the blessings of liberty. My class would be like, uh-huh, what? What does that mean? So, okay, secure the blessings of liberty. Um, we want to kind of like take care of good things, um, of our freedom and stuff. So I, it's very hard to explain because this is not how we talk anymore. So I'm gonna put it together with the, the next part set, the next sentence. It says, secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. It means like we're gonna kind of like take care of things so it's so everything stays good for ourselves and then posterity means like other people like other generations so like when i leave haley school there's going to be like a new class of third graders and then when they leave me i'll get a new class of third graders people keep coming through and we want this school to be good for all of them as well so the best way i think to say that is um we do this stuff for ourselves and for kids in the future is really what we're doing um, I don't, do we say this stuff? We do this. We do this stuff for ourselves and posterity is kids of the future, peep, other people. That's the best way we could put it for Haley because Haley's not gonna shut down just because you go on to middle school. It's gonna keep going and going, hopefully. You don't want to shut down the school. All right, so then the the very last part of it is weird. Do ordain and establish this constitution. Do ordain and establish this constitution. As an adult, when I hear that even, I'm like, what? It's just very confusing. So pretty much if you're establishing something, you're setting it up and ordain is like agreeing on this order. So we're pretty much agreeing that we're gonna set up and start this promise, this pledge that we're making to treat people fairly, to keep it a place of peace, to listen to people, and to fill each other's buckets. 
that's a pretty good place to be. So we agree and we start this promise. We agreed and started this promise. We agreed. We agreed. Oh yeah, we got the D. And started this promise. And then the last part would be um, for the United States of America. And we can actually keep that because even though we made this one specific for Haley, we're still in the United States of America. So, let me get that writer, written, written, I don't know. Let me get that written real quick. For the United States of America. So the last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna sing the song, or I am, you could sing if you want to. I'm gonna sing this song um, to the tune of the other one that we just did, following along with the words that we made for the kid-friendly preamble of the Constitution. And then you're gonna do a full little activity, ready? We the students, in order to form a more perfect Haley, treat people fairly and keep this a place of peace. Listen to the people in charge, fill each other's buckets. We do this for ourselves and kids in the future. We agreed and started this promise for the United States of America. And it makes more sense. So this is pretty much what the Constitution is just saying, that there are certain things that we need to do in this place that we live for it to be a good place to live. Certain things we need to do in this place of work and school for it to be a good place to learn and teach, okay? So what we're gonna do now is a fun little activity where you are going to write a little tiny piece of the preamble to the Constitution. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is um, you're gonna pick your favorite piece of the kid-friendly Constitution. So I'll have this for virtual learners and in-person kids that are doing this. Um, I'm gonna have this typed up. So what you're gonna do is teachers project on your screen, virtual kids pull it up on your screen and pick which sentence was like, yeah, this one, treat people fairly, that's the most important to me or fill each other's buckets, yep. And then what I want you to do is just write that on a piece of paper. However, when they signed this constitution, they didn't just sign it with, you know, they didn't have dry erase markers and pencils and stuff. They had to do it like in the video with a feather, and which is called quill, and dipping it in an ink pot and writing that way. So that's how I want you to do it. Now feathers, eh, we probably can't really use those unless you have those at home. So. In-person kids, your teacher has a little kit, and virtual kids, if you can do this, I'd like you to do this as well, but it depends on if you have the supplies. All I need you to do is go outside and find a stick, a little skinny stick. You're gonna get a stick, and if you have any type of paint that you could use for this, I want you to stick that stick in the paint and try to write your sentence, just the one sentence with the stick and the paint, so you can see how hard it was to write without just normal pencils. And let's make it even harder. They also did not have da, 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 lights. They didn't have electricity. So can you do it with the lights off? In the dark-ish, I mean, you can have the window cracked or whatever, so you're not completely dark. But can you do it with the lights off because there's no electricity and um, no pen or pencil? You can use paper because they had some types of, of paper. And um, write your favorite sentence and then sign your name at the bottom. If you can do it in cursive, even better. So that's your activity for today. Have fun and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.